you think India suffered? Do you think India is in a worse place now than it would have been if it was never colonized by the British? Now, I'm not saying the British didn't kill people. I'm not saying they were completely fair, but also the world was a different place back then. No, nowhere was fair. If the British didn't turn up to India in the 1800s, then the Indians would be killing the Indians. People just killed each other. That's how it worked, right? Do you think India would be in a better place today if it was never colonized by the British? All right, so this is not a geopolitical channel and I'm least interested in talking about world economics, history and my undying love for the motherland like Subhash Chandra Bose. You see, my way of expressing the love and the affection and the passion I have for my motherland is very different and I choose to stick by it. And honestly, for this channel, since I do have a sizable amount of international viewers, I wouldn't even care calling myself an Indian because I honestly believe I'm a global citizen. I don't belong anywhere yet, I belong everywhere. So as long as you, I mean not really you, the hypothetical, the metaphorical you, as long as you don't superimpose your nationhood or your idea of your nationality and your patriotism on me, I wouldn't even label myself as an Indian for the most part. We all speak a common language courtesy, the guys who I'm going to talk about in a bit, but hey, we are all equal or at least we can all strive to be equals in this context. However, there comes a time when someone or the other with a half ass knowledge on geopolitics, world economics and history comes down and talks about my country in a way that they aren't even aware of. But like I said, I'm a global citizen. I wouldn't care about it for the most part. But in this case, the man in discussion happens to be from my field or my industry. There is this one similar topic that we both cover or we both try to talk about. One small section, one small bit of my channel which covers the idea of Red Pill and its true benefits for the modern men. Or at least that's what I thought until this very moment. Because you see, if you are a man of my sphere of content and if you try to shove down your dumb ideas about my country down my throat, then I will have a problem, then I will speak up, then I will defend my motherland. I mean sure, this man may have had his fair share of women in his life, this man would have even made his fair share of money in his life. But holy hell, when will these guys learn to read research and study a few things before opening up their wide mouth about every damn thing they feel they are privileged or knowledgeable about? And it's this unawareness gentlemen, it's this lack of knowledge, it's this lack of research that has become my problem. So let's talk about it. Gentlemen, my name is Mayank Bhattacharya and in this video, in today's episode, I am an Indian. And this is me defending my country from a man who may preach a few sensible things about sex and money but is absolutely wrong and lost when it comes down to world economics, geopolitics and the world history. Let's roll the intro. Okay, so first up, an important disclaimer. I don't hate this guy. Actually, let me rephrase it. Hate is a very strong word. Gentlemen, I don't even dislike this guy. Fuck, I don't even know him. So what's there to dislike in him anyway? This critique, this rant, this defense or whatever you may like to call it is just for that naive thought or that stupid idea that he has about my country and my country's past in general. So this is not personal. Hell, I think men like Andrew Tate are even a necessity in the West. No, not in my country, not in my motherland, but maybe in the West. But just like his thoughts and ideas about sex and money would be a necessity in the West, I think my defense as a men's lifestyle guy from my country is also a necessity to wake these guys up or to at least give them a food for thought that these guys will have after hopefully finishing up this entire. So the only goals I had whilst writing this and producing this video were very simple. One, give you all a wake up call, take a pause and read, read and research about the past before you make a comment. And two, for my citizens, read about your past, be aware of the history because if you aren't really aware of the past and history, you can't really have a prosperous and a thriving future ahead. So hopefully this piece answers these two questions. Alright, so if you sit down and do a quick research on what India was and how India was or this whole Indian subcontinent was before 1747, you can see a lot of things by yourself, especially when you compare it with what India was left with after 1947. This is 200 years of study and research we are talking about. It will take you some time, but I beg you to do it 
for once in your life. Today, gentlemen, in this piece, let me break down a few very basic facts. One, you can Google it or simply head over to Wikipedia and look at the world economics or the history of the world's GDP according to dates, millennia, and centuries. You see, up until 1747, yes, the time when USA was not even a thing on the map, or at least on the map of GDPs, it was the Indian and the Chinese dynasty, or it was the Indian and the Chinese region, which contributed to about 65 to 68 percent of world's GDP. That's about two thirds of world GDP contributed by these two countries. One third of it coming from my motherland. This is right up until your forefathers knocked our door. And it came through the East India Company. Now, this is not coming from some Congress Liberal Party or some BJP's Rashtrawad movement. This is Wikipedia. This is your damn thing. This is your publication. This is your piece. I don't want to get political with it. I don't have to get political with it. These are just facts in your own damn history. But they turned up and they gave genuine value to the point people thought, okay, these white people turned up on this boat. They know shit. Oh, whoa, railroad. Whoa, okay. Whoa, schools. <laughs> like, they, you don't. They didn't do it purely by force. India is a big place, and I think being under the British Empire afforded these countries a lot of security and safety and technological advancements. And I don't think it was all completely a bad thing. So when you make a comment or when you say these ignorant things, where you probably claim yourself to bring civilization to our land, I'd want you to take a pause and read upon civilizations at the very first place in hand. You thought we were wild beasts. You thought we didn't have any sense of being. How on earth did we manage to produce one third of world's GDP if we, as a civilization, were such lost creatures? You see, India as a region was industrialized much before you could even read of. We as a country were growing at a pace that you could not even think of. Yes, up until the time you decided to knock into our doors, we were a land of incredible wealth, joy, and happiness. We were probably the most spiritual and happiest place on this planet Earth. Hell, why do you think Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, and all these guys have been to our land, have been to our place? When they were lost and confused about their life in general, maybe it's time for an introspection, or maybe you just think you're smarter than them. Now, if you look at this map again, and if you look at it very carefully, you would see that America didn't even exist up until 1747, and India and China were the richest regions of the world. Now, notice what happens in the next 200 years. China, we are not going to talk about because Britishers couldn't go there; it wasn't colonized by the British, but they did manage to come to us because we were a spiritual place. We were a very happy, prosperous land to be at. Now, notice the change. Notice the transfer of wealth from one region to the other. Up until 1747, a country that did not even exist is now the world's richest country. I'm talking about the year 1947, and the one which was supposed to produce the one third of the world's GDP is now dirt poor. I wonder where did all that money go? I wonder how does this world economics work in general? Who knows? Maybe somebody can teach me a thing or two about it. The mighty Greeks, the mighty Romans, the cavalry Egyptians, and whatnot. All these civilizations, the ancient human civilizations, they're all gone. They're all bygones. They don't exist. They are not in the maps anymore. But we, as a civilization, we as a culture, still exist. If you look at some of the biggest. Best buildings in most of these countries are some of the most critical infrastructure. It's the shit the British built 200 years ago, to this day, and they had their liberation for a very long time, and they haven't managed to surpass the infrastructure the British built. Because if you do have any doubts, I wonder if the pyramids were made by your ancestors. The architecture that you speak of, well, I wonder if you have ever seen the architecture of our temples, which are probably. 500 to 1,000 years old in discussion. I wonder if Taj Mahal was built in your country, in your destination. It's not. So let's just not talk about architecture here. My friend, the only reason you probably hear about your colonial architecture is because we have kept it alive. There are, there were actually plenty more buildings that were built by Britishers that didn't serve any purpose. They were pure ugly, and we took it down because we had better things to build there. But hey, we as culture, we like to preserve things, especially well-built things, and we are not ashamed of admitting that yes, there were a few beautiful things made, and we liked to. Keep it and sustain it like that. When you spoke about schools and education, you thought that you gave us schools, and you thought you gave us a lot more of what you took away from us. Now we'll talk about that taking away part in a minute, but let's talk about schools right here. Andrew, did anyone ever tell you, or did you try doing a research on what happened to all the temples we have had in our country, and what was the actual idea of having so many temples in our country? Well, there were schools. 
they were institutions we have had this thing called vishwavidyalaya and mahavidyalaya which was in layman's language global schools yes much before harvard was a thing we have had harvard for the entire eastern region of the world yes koreans japanese chinese vietnamese all these people all these people for various reasons in the east used to come to us to read educate be scholars and go back to the country and do great things in their own motherland if you haven't heard about it i'm trying to give you a perspective on our education but that was right until the 17th century i wondered what happened after that now that we have addressed that let's talk about the economics the us being the poorest country or whatever that we were when you left us with a begging bowl you see this is not coming from one politician or this is not coming from one political party or one minister from our country if you would just take out some time and google out these two guys one our external affairs minister or our foreign minister mr s j shankar who is also a very trendy man on the internet right now if you have not heard about him now you'll probably hear about him very soon and two mr sashi tharoor he is not even from the same political party he is also a member of parliament but he is from a totally different party mr jay shankar is a traditional right wing and mr sashi tharoor is a traditional left wing guy you know many of you would have heard uh, in another country the term century of humiliation okay india actually had two centuries of humiliation by the west because the west kind of in a in its predatory form came into india uh, in the mid 18th century and continued all, almost exactly for two, well, for 190 years after that and uh, it was interesting uh, uh, i think a year ago Uh, there was actually a, a very serious economic study uh, which tried to estimate how much the british took out of india in value terms and a very calculated math ended up put a number of 45 trillion dollars at today's value in fact the britain financed its industrial revolution and its prosperity from the depredations of empire the fact that britain came to one of the richest countries in the world in the early uh, 18th century and reduced it after 200 years of of plunder to one of the poorest But all of that is really not known anymore if you just listen to both of their talks that they have had about the amount of wealth the amount of wealth that you have transferred quote on quote or taken away from my motherland you'll probably stop talking about economics altogether about 40 trillion dollars in today's estimated values 40 trillion dollars just for the context of things if you take out china from the top 6 list that's more than the wealth of the usa and all the european unions the top european unions combined that's the amount of estimated wealth you took away from this colonies in the mere 200 years now mind you i haven't even mentioned the genocides the brutalities and the killings that has been a part of that has been a regular part of the entire british india british empire process because if this wasn't sad and depressing already it will for sure make your blood boil so let's just not get there but hey, it's 2022 right now it's been 75 years since we literally fought back our freedom since we literally took back our freedom freedom of whatever we were left with freedom of having a country when it was dirt poor malnourished diseased and what not but in 75 years apparently according to the world economics we have now surpassed the british empire in terms of total accumulated wealth we are the fifth largest world's economy china is already the second largest world economy and if you thought that you could make china your satellite state just like the other eastern countries as you have you were mistaken and china is proving it Now our northern neighbors might not have the civilization left but this country still has this country is still beating what it had since millennia so we are getting up again we are getting up strong chinese did it by force we are going to do through sheer will and if you think you can suppress us if you think you can limit our growth if you think you can probably have this one sided world view on things as you've always thought it to be true it is going to change and it is going to change very So the Greeks, Romans, Egyptians and Chinese they have all had one thing in common at least in the past they all had one thing in common and that was their civilization being sadly they are gone but greatly we still exist now i doubt you will ever watch this i doubt this video will ever reach out to your mighty presence to your mighty view but sooner than later much before you see the next 15 20 years of your life you will hear about us in a way that you haven't thought of it up until it's very True. It's our time, Mr. Tate. It's our time.
few supporting links in description in case you want you can read up on it by yourself and to all my fellow indians to all my countrymen learn learn from the mistakes that the west makes and learn from the good things that the west does in the regular life we have a lot to do we have a lot more to grow we have a lot more to become as a nation that we are but we can only do so if we are being our best balanced self at every given point in time i mean sure we can't be perfect but we can definitely strive to be there with our own will and strength and in case you haven't in case you are doubting it in case you are still thinking about it it's time you level up your style it's time you level up your image talking about image and style we have been dressing up the west this entire time and they aren't even aware of it but that's a different topic to talk about it's about time you level up your image it's about time you start wearing something that's a lot more powerful a lot more global so that we can probably be out there in the global suns and speak for ourselves when we have to defend ourselves in our very own way for that we have got teamy basics for your grooming and all your hair needs and all your epic handsomeness we have got calves grooming the heads up now live at calvesgrooming.com this is now live at teamybasics.com and of course before i forget the beautiful boston shoes now live at teamybasics.com in case you haven't you can check them all out day night sold and what not all available all made in india all the country proud at teamybasics and at calvesgrooming.com see you soon in the next one gentlemen Dress up, stay strong, stay stylish. Be a global citizen. Be a global man. But if somebody tries to shove things down your throat, be proud of your nation's stance. People have fought, died, and been through a lot for the place that you live in, my friend. Do not let this go to waste. Do not let your freedom go to waste. Otherwise, Jai Hind. Take care. Bye.